short introduction about uh, about where I come from. I come from a council that does not deal with agriculture or health. No? Anything, basically anything under the sun that we can think of. Baka pwede namin, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, do some work together. In fact, uh, if you go by the numbers, we support 21 different uh, uh, sectors. No? So it's a wide, it's a, it's a wide uh, field for all of us to uh, be working uh, together. Of course, uh, we are a funding agency uh, uh, similar to what uh, Picard and Fisher would, uh, would, uh, would offer. On top of that, we also uh, provide support for uh, human resource development uh, in the past with done scholarships. And, uh, but now we're mostly uh, supporting, uh, say, uh, visiting researchers as scientists. Uh, lately, we've been uh, concentrating our efforts towards uh, technology transfer and commercialization. And as a government agency, we also provide support for policy. Uh, one of the key businesses that we, that we like to convey in, uh, in our sector is the value of the knowledge that we uh, produce towards uh, a more productive and competitive uh, economy. And this is only possible by, by uh, through conversion of the products of our research and development efforts. Uh, when it translates to some form of innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, uh, I was going to show the, how, what our standing is in terms of uh, R&D. I was going to tell you that uh, you know, in Asia, we're ranked like maybe uh, 20th in the list of, uh, in terms of R&D uh, funding. And uh, vis-a-vis, uh, the things that are deemed to be most important, no? uh, and these are additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, big data, and those that will with space technologies and robotics. Uh, we thought of uh, you know the grand challenges probably that that, that would uh, uh, that we face currently, no, in this uh, in, this, in the in the engineering industry, and these are what we thought would uh, really. Uh, uh, give us some level of, uh, uh, of uh, of uh, of some level of challenge you know, when it comes to uh, research and development. First, uh, first is uh, energy. Uh, as I, <clears throat> you know, the easiest way to tell to tell it is that uh, everything and ev uh, everything and anything that we do requires power to drive it. And it so happened that uh, among the resources that we uh, have uh, the least is energy. And uh, it is the most expensive. It is about, and uh, we need to develop uh, uh, systems for producing, storing, and transferring this energy into some other forms that will be most uh, effective uh, for us. No? So. Second is that uh, uh, in terms of challenges, we need to produce new and novel and innovative products that are of high quality. In the past, we've always been uh, aspiring for more efficient production or more quantities out of the quantities out per unit uh, input that we uh, get. But because of the uh, globalization, uh, we, uh, we see it best that we ought to concentrate our efforts towards uh, producing novel or innovative products that are of high quality. Number two, we ought to be concentrating our efforts and our talents and our energies towards answering the country's immediate needs and gaps. And I already mentioned the need for uh, affordable and accessible energy if we are going to be more uh, competitive. And we have to increase also the level of industry competitiveness. Uh, already, well, uh, you're too, uh, already too much familiar with the challenges uh, brought about by uh, uh, in the, by uh, the too much uh, well uh, the traffic conditions that we have. Uh, one other challenge that we have is uh, bringing about a more efficient uh, transportation system, mass transportation system, not only in land but also in water. Uh, not only efficient, but but perhaps also to make it a little well safer, no? Just this month, just the other month, uh, we had had uh, two encounters of, uh, of uh, accidents. Um, 
and uh, we also have to support uh, key researches in uh, energy sufficiency. You know? It's ironic because in some days, just days, we have too little of it, and the next day, we experience too much of it. And uh, also these photos are taken uh, one month, just one month apart. So in terms of engineering problems, we have to face these challenges in trying to, to also redevelop or re-engineer our uh, infrastructure. Uh, there's been a buzz about uh, the fourth industrial revolution and uh, the readiness, the level of readiness uh, that we are uh, in, uh, in, in our country. In fact, uh, it's been said that we are, uh, we have actually one of the lowest levels no, in terms of uh, uh, readiness for uh, Industry 4.0. Um, and uh, while people, a lot of people are actually aspiring for more jobs to be generated out there, what we actually need are more skills. No? So we know we ought to develop more skills for our uh, for our uh, engineers, for our technologists, actually for our technopreneurs. Uh, I just like to give you a rundown of uh, some of the things that we're doing uh, uh, doing in the department, particularly in the council, and what kind of projects we support in order to uh, rise up to many to uh, some of these challenges. It's been said that you know we are also inefficient because of the government systems that we have, so we support that. The government uh, processes and uh, uh, the government processes and uh, uh, processes that we uh, that we employ. So we support that researchers that would enable, uh, say, for example, local government units offer more efficient uh, transactions with those who are dealing with them in terms of developing payment systems for business permits, for real estate uh, uh, permits, etc., et et uh, and others. No? And so this gives us a way basically to provide uh, that much needed help in easing uh, that business that's going to be helped with, uh, that's going to be uh, helped with uh, our uh, local government. Uh, the other uh, technologies that we supported is trying to address this issue of, uh, of transportation. So one is trying to touch offenders, the other one is being able to support local planners in uh, in uh, developing more efficient ways to manage uh, traffic. Uh, we're particularly proud of uh, technologies that have found their way into uh, commercialization. There's a talk, I, I, I came at, a, uh, uh, at that particular moment when there was a discussion about being able to uh, make, uh, to commercialize the products, the, the products of R&D. And uh, this, this particular, uh, Technology here is one of them. We just launched uh, uh, Azure uh, just last uh, September 1, I believe. And this is one of the examples of uh, having a successful transition from uh, research and development to uh, commercialization. Uh, we all, I also want to share with you uh, the other vision, uh, the visions that we have for uh, developing uh, smart, smart cities through uh, research and development efforts. So you saw earlier technologies that uh, try to monitor a lot of things. We saw technologies that will uh, enable uh, uh, to facilitate uh, uh, commerce. But uh, most of these resources are not integrated with each other. So we want to see technologies that are melted together so that they can work together towards uh, uh, developing, uh, well, uh, now we, we labeled it as smarter uh, cities or governments. Uh, meanwhile, we are also trying to still address some of the key gaps in uh, infrastructure. For example, there are still uh, remaining 5% of our communities that are not yet uh, electrified. And so uh, we uh, sought these uh, projects to be, to be uh, undertaken in support of the uh, rural electrification uh, through uh, use of uh, solar energy. Um, there are also technologies that uh, help us, uh, enable us to maximize the uh, gains that we have coming out of uh, some other technologies like e-vehicles are fast becoming 
uh, the, sort, the mode of uh, mass transport or the energy for mass transport. But we need to support them by way of increasing the, the, uh, the efficiency that they do, uh, the efficiency by which they, they uh, provide service. And uh, one of the sources is actually the, the sources of inefficiency is the um, time to charge. So we have uh, we have uh, supported energies that will enable them to actually charge four times faster than what is uh, currently available. And we also have to make uh, these transportation systems based on e-vehicles a lot more intelligent. How do we do this? If you put in a lot of sensors in it, and this has been always the this should be always the story of what we do. We get data from what we observe out there, and then use that kind of data to make our systems more efficient. And that, I think, is the, what, uh, what, uh, sort of my, what summarizes uh, uh, what engineering is all about. And uh, lately, we've also invested in uh, key centers that will also bring uh, key industries to the next uh, level, to the next, uh, um, <clears throat> we are now at the verge of a new, uh, new decade and uh, one of the uh, features of Industry 4.0 is being able to come up with additive manufacturing uh, facilities, including facilities for uh, 3D printing. Uh, this is, and uh, recently, our advanced manufacturing uh, devices and materials testing laboratory also supports industry by way of providing testing services for uh, materials that are uh, being tested. No? Because one of the key gaps now in the industry is that many of the tests that are being done on prototypes are still being done outside the country. And that, uh, uh, and that is quite inefficient because we spend a lot of time and resources. So we thought uh, it best to have all of these uh, uh, tests done through uh, the establishment of local lab laboratories. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier the value of data coming in from uh, sensors. And so we're now slowly but surely coming into the era of sensors being used in everyday, uh, in our everyday lives. In fact, uh, we launched two satellites that contain instruments that will measure data. And uh, we have also facilities that will receive that data from those satellites. For the purposes of the industry, uh, particularly manufacturing by way of uh, providing testing services through the numerous uh, laboratories that we have established at the USD. Uh, second, we must be aware that uh, some of this, uh, so that a lot of capabilities that we have built was around data about environment, about infrastructure, about the many things that we observe every day. And we have not found the uh, uh, practical uses for it and we need to demonstrate these capabilities that we are able to make a connection between the data that we you know, the, the, what we observe as data and uh, what we uh, do as a uh, country you know, in different sectors. Particular to, manu to manufacturing and uh, industry, this is a very important step. Uh, number uh, number two, we need to uh, number three, we need to align our research efforts to achieve uh, Industry 4.0, and the laboratories that we have uh, established uh, so far uh, intends to serve that purpose. The research and development uh, priorities that we have uh, that we have uh, laid down for in the next few years will focus on uh, this integration of uh, of uh, key aspects of Industry 4.0. Adaptability, flexibility, and programmability, and uh, of course uh, the human uh, the human uh, uh, factors will always be very important uh, because there are still going to be workers in uh, our uh, communities, but they will not be uh, uh, just mimicking machines, but rather they will be thinking on uh, further ways on how to improve innovation. I leave you with some uh, key statistics coming from our uh, council. Since 2011, when uh, 2010, when uh, uh, the Philippine Council for Industry, Energy, and Emerging Technologies was 
was formed out of the two uh, uh, former councils. Uh, it has so far supported 700 projects. Out of the 700 projects, 216 of, of them have that potential to produce uh, technologies. Out of the 216 technologies, 52 had uh, potentials for being commercialized. And out of that 52, until today, 19 were had seen the day or uh, had seen the light of commercialization. So you see how filtered those uh, initial sets of uh, projects were until they uh, found their way to market or until they found their way through adoption in government or until they found their way through policies. So yung policy kanina, yun yung 700 minus 19. Tapos yung 19, yun yung nakikita na natin sa shell. But the key message now is we need more of this uh, these kinds of technologies that should be out there in the market for all of us to enjoy, for all of us to share, for all of us to uh, so partake with. No? So uh, I hope that these are the challenges that we pose to our uh, scientists and engineers in the sector, uh, that you will be able to rise up to these challenges in these uh, challenging times uh, ahead of us. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you.